Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Geoffrey Otieno from the Technical University of Kenya, where I am the director of the School of Chemistry, and I'm a member of the Kenya Chemical Society, where I sit in the governing council. So our topic of uh, discussion today is uh, chemical security. Our goals will be to look at uh, chemical security and compare this with chemical safety. We'll look at uh, some concepts of chemical security and finally, we'll conclude by looking at a class of chemicals we call dual-use chemicals. So chemical safety and chemical security. In chemical safety, our aim is always to protect us humans or users of chemicals from accidents that might harm us in the laboratory. But when it comes to chemical security, the aim is actually to protect against the intentional misuse of chemicals. Now, overall, the goals of both chemical safety and chemical security is to promote safe and peaceful use of chemicals, as chemicals are part of our daily lives. The purpose of chemical safety is to protect users from being unintentionally harmed by the chemicals they're using. And there are three ways in which we can protect the user. Number one is to eliminate the source. And number two is to block the pathway through which the user might come in contact with the chemical. And number three is to protect the user by using equipment, which could be gloves, lab coats, among others. Chemical security, on the other hand, we aim at protecting the chemical asset. And we protect the chemical asset from people who we call threats people who might want to access these chemicals for ulterior uses, which could be to harm us. Now, there are three ways, again, how we approach chemical security. And the first one is to eliminate the threat, eliminate the person. The second one is to block the pathway, which means you put barriers that will prevent the threat from accessing our chemical which is the asset. And number three is to protect that asset, which means we put systems in place to prevent the threat from accessing the assets, which are chemicals. So again, chemical security aims at protecting our chemicals from being accessed by individuals who might have ulterior motives. So why should we worry about chemical safety? So chemical safety broadly wants to take care of workers, it wants to take care of the community, and it wants to take care of the environment. And broadly speaking, chemical safety is the right thing to do. So chemical accidents have inevitably resulted in a stricter control and more scrutiny. One of the biggest incidents was the Bhopal incident that occurred in India. The plant where the incident occurred was manufacturing seven. And um, seven is made using methyl isocyanate. Um, the incident occurred at night. Several lives in the thousands were lost. And to date, the effects are still being felt in India. Such incidences inevitably will lead to more scrutiny on the users of chemicals. Now, chemical security, on the other hand, is something that is also important for us to think about. And this is because there's a history of people deliberately using chemicals to harm others, whether it is in world wars or a regionally confined uses of chemicals to harm others. These are well documented. Therefore, as users of chemicals, we should worry about chemical security. Now, to compound uh, the problem of chemical security is the availability of information. On websites, on books, on blogs, the information on how to weaponize some of these chemicals is readily available and uh, makes it easier for people who have ulterior motives to make weapons using readily available chemicals. Now, some of these chemicals can easily be purchased off websites in stores and uh, putting them together, the information is available. Therefore, the worry 
on chemical security increases as more information is available and as access of the materials is also available. So chemicals of concern, these are chemicals that are considered to be toxic, flammable, reactive, or valuable, and they present a safety or a security hazard. Now, a hazard is something that has the potential to cause harm. Now, dual-use chemicals, on the other hand, these are chemicals that have both good use and bad uses. They could also be equipment in the labs, and we'd call this dual-use equipment, or they could also be human beings, and we would call this dual-use expertise or persons. These are people who can either choose to do good or do bad. An example is the inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometer, which is good in testing presence of certain elements. However, the same equipment can be used to enrich uranium. The ICPMS is a good equipment in analytical chemistry, but at the same time can be used to uh, concentrate uh, uranium. Our focus, though, will be on dual-use chemicals. So chemicals in terms of security can be targeted by people in terms of theft or sabotage. So chemical thefts are also well documented and particularly dual use chemicals should cause a lot of concern in terms of security. Now for theft, benign materials such as ammonium nitrate or chlorine or even pesticides which are known to be precursors to some weapons should be taken more seriously. Now sabotage is also well known and this could be due to economic reasons. One uh, individual would like to sabotage the operation of a given chemical plant and therefore chemical security becomes very important that we protect our chemicals, our plants from sabotage. So what are the threats to chemical security? The threats lead us to vulnerabilities or weaknesses. Some of the threats to chemical security include unlimited access to facilities. If access to a facility or a lab is not well um, monitored or controlled, this would be a threat to chemical security. Expertise, increase in expertise in use of chemicals and information is also a big threat to chemical security. And if the users of chemicals do not put measures to properly secure the chemicals. These chemicals could be accessed by persons with ulterior motives to actually cause harm to the rest of the population. Other threats include um, shipping. During shipping, during transit, chemicals are normally at the highest risk. Measures should be put in place during movement of chemicals from one place to another so that uh, the best protection is provided. Controls and documentation is also very important. If information about chemicals is not well stored or documented, this could be a loophole for which persons with ulterior motives could actually get their hands on the chemicals and cause harm to the populations. So generally, there are good practices for both chemical safety and chemical security. A few of them include minimization of hazardous chemicals. These are chemicals that are known to cause harm to humans. And uh, we do this by either replacing these hazardous chemicals by chemicals that are more benign. We can also minimize the hazardous chemicals by reducing the scale of experiments. So instead of using large volumes of chemicals for experiments, we can scale down the volumes and still achieve the same results. The second good practice is to minimize or restrict access to hazardous chemicals. Knowing the chemicals we have, knowing how we store, handle, and even dispose the chemicals, and also knowing who has access to these chemicals, what kind of knowledge and expertise do we have who can actually access these chemicals. The 
third good practice for both chemical safety and security is planning what to do when an incident occurs. Thank you very much. I hope now it is clear what chemical safety, what chemical security is, what their aims are in terms of protecting the environment, the users um, from being harmed using chemicals. The two approaches where safety, we try to protect the user from unintentional use. And uh, the second approach, which is trying to protect our chemicals from being accessed by threats or persons who want to use the chemicals for arterial motives.